My boy pageant fans, finally guys, finally I am here to do my Miss Universe recap and I don't know if anyone is still interested to watch this considering that it's been almost two weeks since the pageant ended. I am so sorry for making this very late upload because I am really taking my sweet time to rest and attend to so many things on my day job after getting back from my Miss Universe coverage in New Orleans last week. Sa so, lang guys, I really took some time off from social media to really think and assess how I conducted myself all throughout my coverage as it has allowed me to gain new perspectives and insights about, re about rediscovering myself, reassessing my work ethic and values in order for me to become a better person or vlogger here in my own platform. So again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your endless support and patience, reading all your messages during my la my last live chat session with you all last week make me made me feel so much better. So maraming maraming salamat sa suporta ninyong lahat. Covering Miss Universe on the ground was something I have been planning all along as part of my expansion here on my platform. Alam kong magastos guys, but I feel the rewards would be great, especially if I do my job well. And I really want to please you all here too, so I went all the way there to be able to give you fresh new content, as opposed to if I would just be sitting here and doing a lot of commentary videos, which was what I have been doing for the past two years. So sabi ko sa sarili ko, bakit hindi ko subukan naman mag-cover doon using the money and savings that I had earned from all your viewership here for the past two years. And so, I went. And now that I am back here in Manila, wala akong pinagsisihan looking back sa decision ko because I was very successful in my goal of bringing the entire Miss Universe experience closer to you guys right in front of your phone screens as if you were also with me in New Orleans the whole time. Kung ano yung binigay na access sa akin ng Miss Universe organization, ipiniramdam ko yun talaga sa inyo. And I will use this access and on-site coverage in sharing my recap with you guys. And just like my current sponsor, PLDT Home, for this content, I am really committed to keep you connected with anything that was happening in Miss Universe during that time. PLDT Home is the country's leading broadband and digital services provider that allows seamless, simultaneous streaming in all your devices at home. Enabling moments that bring your family closer together, PLDT Home offers fiber DSL Ultera and Telpad services. So check out their website for more details. And so let's begin. Let's first talk about the venue, which was the Ernest Morial Convention Center. It's a huge, massive convention center that is about 10 to 15 minute walk from the location of my Airbnb. It's like, guys, parang ganito, SMX convention here in Manila, except that it's te times 10 big, spanning from halls A to Z with a seating capacity of 7,000 to 8,000. The convention center is home pala to the country's largest contiguous space exhibit hall with 1.1 million square feet of prime exhibit space plus more than 100 meeting rooms, a huge theater, and a ballroom with 25 square feet pre-function area according to my research in the internet. And above the auditorium is where the, where the girls were doing their rehearsals. And for the finals and prelims venue, the pageant only occupied Hall B. Diba sabi ko kanina, hall from Hall A to Z. Hall B lang, with the media center just beside it. So that's, imagine that's how huge the entire convention is. So ako guys, buhay na buhay talaga ako spending my time covering the girls just there because even it was just whether for rehearsals or other activities as you can find, as you can find a huge outlet shopping mall outside the convention center on top of the numerous hotels and restaurants around that area. Pero sa totoo lang guys, when I went to watch the finals, hindi na ako masyadong kinilig because I had already watched the dress rehearsals hours before. So it felt like watching the dress rehearsals all over again except that everyone involved in the show were amped up 100% performance level to give us a show that we truly deserve. However, I have to admit, I got chills as soon as the opening numbers started. Paano ba naman? May footage ako. Nako, nakamayang ko si USA at si Venezuela sa aisle before coming to the stage. 
And apart from that, a bevy of giant costume clad dancers came out from the audience area which reminded me so much of the production values of the 1999 Miss Universe pageant held in Trinidad and Tobago. Yung carnival inspired theming naramdaman ko knowing that I was in New Orleans and the show really was trying to capture the annual Mardi Gras event during the opening number. And then there was Harnas holding a pasarol opening the show and tapos nandoon pa si Wendy Fitzwilliam who was one of the judges that night, Miss Universe 1998 from Trinidad and Tobago. So all the more that I was really reminded of the pageant in Trinidad and Tobago that time. For me, the production tried its best to achieve that kind of festive atmosphere but I feel there were some elements missing to make the show grander and more festive. For one, the stage design did not highlight the Mardi Gras or the culture of the whole city. I would have loved for them to incorporate a backdrop or even post a photo of the scenic places of the city on its giant LED screen to get that New Orleans feel. Right, And I wish they would have also used more masks as there weren't half masks and enough long beads to really capture the essence of the whole, sh of the whole New Orleans as we usually see from the floats during the parades and festivals there, especially pag Mardi Gras event. The, the beads that we only saw instead were from the Porsche and Scarlet dresses the girls were wearing during the opening number. Tapos, the choice of musical performance like Big Sam's, Big Sam's Funky Nation, Big Fridia, and local artist Amanda Shaw were justified as these singers were really hard to bring out the New Orleans vibe during the opening number. But how I wish, again, they could have amped out the mood to a, to a more festive feel. So overall, it was kind of a subdued opening number. So I get why some of the contestants were screeching their voices during their introduction for crowd pleasing purposes. While I find it very entertaining and amusing at first, I am really hoping Miss Universe organization would ask them next time to revert to doing their introductions in a classy way. Buti na lang in her brief turn during the Finals night, Celeste managed to do her introduction in a very non-flashy way, pero sakto pa rin to rile up in our seats to cheer for her. Pero guys, sa totoo lang, the moment Celeste came out doing her intro, I noticed right away why she was suddenly placed in the middle of their group considering that she was the fourth in their lineup during the preliminary competition. Well, it would turn out as the Miss Universe organization would announce it on the show, Miss Norway got sick after the preliminary competition. Kaya, as an accredited media member of Miss Universe organization, I was kaya pala, I have always been, I was always instructed to wear my facial mask all the time during my one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of the candidates. So that's how strict MUO was, was enforcing the whole thing, especially that Miss Curacao got, also got COVID as well, but quickly recovered just in time for the finals. So in sum, you, there were actually 83 contestants who participated in the show, three candidates down from the original 86 after both, Latvi after both Latvia and Kazakhstan back out for different reasons. It would have been 82 had China not made it in time as well. Then finally, as soon as Big Fridia was finished singing, the main hosts of the show were finally introduced. Jeannie Mike, Jenkins, and former Miss Universe Olivia Copo finally came out on stage. And you know what? I wasn't expecting so much from them when they were announced as hosts, but boy, did they both deliver during the entire proceedings. They were both so lively and energetic enough to enthrall a crowd of pageant fanatics from around the world. So, wow. I must say, Olivia has totally redeemed herself from hosting the 2020 edition and definitely enjoyed every single moment she had on stage. Maybe it helped that she and Jeannie Mai are already friends so the chemistry is already there it's like two female best friends having a great saturday night and the whole world was watching them on stage similarly the backstage shows katriona gray and zuri ho were equally impressive with their turns despite not knowing each other personally both katriona and zuri were so pro in their cues and ad libs that it did not seem they were reading the teleprompter the whole time and sa totoo lang guys when i was watching the dress rehearsals i wasn't able to see them as they were positioned at the back of the auditorium but 
just to hear their voices amplified on the speaker or monitor in the whole auditorium made me feel as if I was just listening to them on the radio, especially Catriona. She was so bubbly and engaging, which totally offset her shrill, tiny voice. And I was just so proud as a Filipino sitting in the dress rehearsals as I tried to bait in every word that she said. Now let's go to the top 16 announcement. I won't dwell about it too much on this aspect as I had already talked more about it quite at length in the viral live chat. Yes, viral live chat I had with you guys a day after the finals. Maybe I could talk more about this at length again in another episode once JKN channel has released all the footages of the closed door interview performances of these top 16 candidates who made it to the finals. We all got shocked and we already got our theories, insights, or observations as to why our very own Celeste Cortesi did not make it to the finals. So maybe I will just talk more about how I felt after the shocking announcement right now. I thought I would be so pissed off or angry at the entire results but surprisingly I was able to handle myself quite well that I could really be a good sport even if our candidates still did not make it and instead of sulking down in my seat I managed to collect and or gather myself and still be appreciative of what I was still seeing in front of me that, that there were other candidates who also badly needed my support so as a Filipino fan my support suddenly shifted to the next Filipina candidate Arboninola from the US USA who was still in contention for the title. Then there was also Alicia Fobel from Spain who I got to know deeper personally when she came to the Philippines for her training. And you all saw that in my live chat with you guys on Instagram every commercial break. I would always go live on my Instagram every commercial break just for you guys to see how the mood was there in the auditorium, especially how boisterous it was given how the Venezuelans had out cheered everyone from start to finish. So why am I sharing this? Now it's for me and you guys to feel that even if our candidate did not place, we should learn to be a good sport in supporting other candidates since all of them work as hard as our very own Celeste in the contest. Siguro, kaya hindi na rin ako masyadong naiyak or maybe I was just still in denial then. It's probably because there was another Filipina for fighting for our dream, except that she was wearing a USA sash this time around. Had Arbuni not been a Filipino, I would have probably become quiet in my seat or I could have probably transferred my support to Venezuela's Amanda Dumamel or Spain's Alicia Fobel. So it was really shocking for me to see our country not get called for the, for the first time after 12 years and see so many surprises get in the top 16. And kung nakita niyo yung lineup ng top 16, majority of the candidates who made it there were mostly from the Americas and Caribbean re region with only two Europeans, Spain and Portugal, two Asians, India and Laos, one delegate from Oceania, which is Australia, and one African making it to the list. Na, diba? So there were so many candidates who I thought would place like Mexico, Italy, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines of course, and Germany, but it's safe to assume that they were all probably outperformed by the other contestants in the much dreaded close to preliminary interview. That's the main reason I could think of right now. So the top 16 who made it were Puerto Rico, Haiti, Australia, Dominican Republic, Laos, South Africa, Portugal, Canada, Peru, Portugal, Trinidad and Tobago, Curacao, India, Venezuela, Spain, USA, and Colombia. I know that a lot of you are still heartbroken with Celeste Cortesi right now, and so am I. And as I do this content, she has already she had already arrived back here in our country. And I feel what's amazing about her situation right now, despite how sad and devastating it is right now, is that none of us pageant fans are actually mad at her for cutting our 12-year streak. Because we know she 
fought hard for this. We knew her hardships and sacrifices to make us proud. The mere fact that she could not hold her tears during the telecast was how apologetic she was to all of us during that time. The, those tears of sadness which she showed during her brief turn at the start of the evening gown segment of the competition is, was only an indication of the grief and pain that she felt when the, when the streak was broken but i did not anticipate her as the one who would really cut it the organization the miss universe organization apparently was not satisfied with her own brand of women empowerment and transformational leadership and we only have to wait for miss anjukrata jukrata tips solo spot later on to confirm that